Do you like spending money on things that you don't need or that you might not actually end up using? Of course not, and neither do I. But when it comes to Mac accessories, which ones will you buy and actually get a lot of use out of? And which ones will you buy based off of an overhyped YouTube recommendation video just to never use, forget about, and end up becoming an overpriced paperweight collecting dust on your desk? My name is Chris, and I'm a software developer who, embarrassingly enough, has spent an absurd amount of money over the years on accessories for my MacBooks just to end up using a handful of them. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna be walking through the five Mac accessories that are worth the money and that you will get a lot of use out of. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the first thing on the list, which is one that everybody needs, and that is a dongle or a dock, depending on your budget and use case. Now, the reason that this is first on the list is because if you picked up a MacBook Air, you only have access to two Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. And sure, if you picked up a MacBook Pro, you do have access to the third Thunderbolt port, as well as a SD card slot and an HDMI port, but I guarantee you're gonna need access to more ports than that, especially because of the lack of a USB-A port on both computers. Now, I have two dongles and one dock here that I recommend, and coming from someone who's wasted a lot of money on accessories, I spent a good amount of time researching all of the options on the market and truly believe that these are the three best, most cost-effective options out there. So let's start with the first dongle here, and this is one that I've had for several years now, using across multiple different MacBooks without failure. This one's extremely fast and has been incredibly unreliable over the years. And this is the Belkin 6-in-1 USB-C hub. Now with this one, you get access to a gigabit ethernet port, a USB-C port, SD card slot, two USB-A ports, as well as an HDMI port. The second recommendation I have as far as dongles go is the Ugreen 6-in-1 USB-C hub. Now, this is the most cost-effective option on the list, coming in at $22.99 plus tax, but with the cost savings, you are sacrificing two specific and very useful ports. So with the Ugreen USB-C 6-in-1 hub, you get access to an HDMI port, three USB-A ports, an SD card slot, as well as a micro SD card slot. But at this price point, you are giving up the gigabit ethernet port, as well as the USB-C port that you get with the Belkin 6-in-1. Now, if you're someone who plans on using your MacBook in more of a desktop setting, or you just don't really mind the additional size that comes with a dock compared to a dongle, I highly recommend OWC's 14-port dock. Now, when it comes to docks, there are a lot of highly rated ones, and the CalDigit T4 is probably the most highly regarded, but OWC's 14-port dock does come in at about $100 under, and you get a lot of the same functionality out of it. The OWC gives you 85 watts of charging power and the ability to connect two 4K displays or one 5K display. Dual Thunderbolt ports and a Thunderbolt cable is included. With the dock being a little bit bigger in size than the dongles, there are two sides to it, so on the front, you get access to one USB-A port, a USB-C port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone or mic jack, an SD card slot, as well as a micro SD card slot. And then on the back, you get access to two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a mini display port, USB-A port, a gigabit ethernet port, as well as a digital audio output port. So with these three options being pretty spread out as far as pricing goes, ranging from $22.99 to $80, all the way up to $279.99, plus tax, I highly recommend you take into consideration your use case, whether you need all of the additional ports of a dock, or you want more of a mobile piece like a dongle with a little bit less ports available, but still a ton of additional functionality that you get. Now, along with the dongles, if you recently picked up a new MacBook, and unless you have ties to the Russian Mafia with access to an unlimited amount of funding, and you bought a new Mac with the maximum eight terabytes of storage, you're gonna wanna pick up an external SSD. Personally, for us common folk who don't have access to Middle Eastern oil money and a bottomless wallet, whenever someone asks me which MacBook they should get, I always recommend, well, 90% of the time I recommend, a base MacBook Air with eight gigabyte of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. For the 10% that do have a heavier than average workflow, I recommend that they do upgrade from eight to 16 gigs of RAM, but hardly ever do I recommend someone pay the offensively overpriced rates at $200 per additional 256 gigs of built-in SSD storage on their Mac. Buying an external SSD like this Samsung T5 
or the newer and sturdier T7 Shield, which has dust and shock protection for those accidental drops, is without a doubt the most cost-effective option in 2023. SSDs like these two are extremely fast with speeds ranging between 540 megabits per second with the T5 and 1050 megabits per second with the T7 Shield. Trust me when I say just save your money and pick up an external SSD like the T5 or this one terabyte T7, which you can pick up for under $100. And I have gone through Amazon, found the best prices available for everything we're going over in this video. Link them all in the description below. So if you do end up wanting to pick up anything that we're going over today, you will know that you're getting the best rates available. Time out. Before we get into the next category of accessories in this video, I wanna let you know that there's still a little under a week left in the $100 Amazon gift card giveaway that I'm running in my last video for the top 10 apps for the MacBook in 2023. If you want to be entered for a chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below letting me know which of these accessories is your favorite or a must have in your workflow. So with that being said, Let's get back to the video. All right, so with dongles and storage covered, you're gonna wanna pick up a good mouse and keyboard. And I know I'm not alone in the whole tech YouTube world when I say that the MX Master 3 mouse and the MX Keys keyboard are two of the most highly regarded and recommended options out there. The MX Master 3 has what Logitech calls dark shield tracking technology, which essentially just lets you use it on any surface, including glass. It has six programmable buttons that can be customized to fit your exact workflow, including app specific presets. For example, I set up the thumb button on the thumb rest here to mimic Mac gestures that you would typically use three fingers on the trackpad to access mission control and your displays. All I have to do is press that button, slide up, and I can access the exact same thing. The MX Master supports both Bluetooth and USB connectivity, giving you two options on how exactly you want it to be connected to your computer. Personally, I go without the USB dongle because Bluetooth works perfectly fine. I have no lags or latency issues, and I don't wanna give up one of the ports on my MacBook to something as stupid as a dongle. And lastly, the battery life on this thing is incredible. Logitech says it lasts 70 days. I've never actually put that to the test and tracked 70 days without charging it. Typically, I just charge it, you know, maybe once or twice a week. Uh, when I really, honestly, whenever I just remember to plug it in at the end of the day. Now, if you do travel a bunch and you want something similar as far as functionality and features go to the MX Master 3, but you think that this mouse is a little bit too big to be carrying around in your luggage, the MX Anywhere is the next best option. And then as far as keyboards go, I cannot recommend the MX Keys enough. I mean, I have the full-sized option here, as well as the MX Keys Mini, which is actually still in the package. I just had to replace mine. And these are the exact same size as Apple's Magic Keyboards, their full-size and their mini version. Both of these keyboards have backlighting that can be turned on and off whenever you like, and are extremely comfortable to use for long periods of time. As a software developer, I use both keyboards for hours on end, probably too long, uh, to, to be completely honest. And I've yet to have experience like any type of wrist pain or, or soreness or anything like that. I do use both. I keep the full size at my desk and then I keep the MX Keys Mini inside of my travel bag. You know, during seasons of work where I'm traveling a bunch, I just like to keep the mini keys inside of my backpack to keep traveling a breeze and make it easy. And the best part about these keyboards is that they have what Logitech calls easy switch technology. So they come with three buttons that lets you switch between up to three devices with just the touch of a button, making it super easy to switch between your computer, tablet, or phone. Both keyboards come with a 10 day battery life. So not the 70 days that comes with the MX Master 3, but 10 days is a hell of a long time. And honestly, I usually just end up plugging both the keyboard and the mouse, like I said, probably once or twice a week. And then just like with the mouse, the MX Master 3 versus the MX Anywhere, if you do travel a lot, I highly recommend the MX Keys Mini. It fits perfectly in pretty much any backpack and it's just a breeze to travel with. And whether you travel a lot or not, this next item is one that you'll get a lot of use out of. This is Anker's 747 150 watt wall charger. 
This thing is built with Anker's gallium nitride technology, which provides charging speeds up to three times faster than traditional chargers. Now, I'm all for buying Apple products, but compare this to Apple's 140 watt wall charger, which is $100 and limited to one port for charging a single device at a time. You can pick up the Anchor for just $10 more and have a charger that is 38% smaller with three USB-C ports and one USB-A port for charging multiple devices simultaneously. The Anchor also comes with this silicon boot that stabilizes it against the wall, so you don't run the risk of accidentally pulling it out of the wall or damaging it when you're charging multiple devices and you unplug one of them. Now, if you don't want or think you'll use the power of the 747, a really great runner-up that is a fraction of the size and cost is Anchor's Nano Pro and comes with two USB-C ports delivering 40 watts of charging power for up to two devices. Moving on to the last, but certainly not least recommendation today, and that is a power bank. Now, you might know this already, but with these new MacBooks, you don't have to use the MagSafe charging. They do allow for USB-C charging, and that's where power banks like this Anker 537 come in handy. It does provide 100 watts of charging power, so you won't run into any throttling issues or slowdowns. And if the Anker isn't in the budget, I did list a couple alternatives that I believe are the best banks for your buck, above 65 watts of charging in the description directly below the anchor. So there you have it. I am running out of daylight and need to wrap this up quickly, but you have my list of recommended accessories that I believe are the best, most cost-effective options in their categories and must-haves for MacBook owners in 2023. And guys, I am currently on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you did find this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.